Hey guys, I know myself here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to answer some of the most common misperceptions as well as things that you could still be doing wrong till this day on your iPhone. You guys have asked many questions. I try to pick some of the most popular ones. And hopefully in this video, I can answer those questions for you guys. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to properly power down your iPhone. Now, I know this may sound silly to most users, but there's actually a proper way to power down and shut down your iPhone. Now, many users know the common way on Face ID device, which is the side button and the volume up button together, which brings the power down menu. But not only does it bring the power down menu, it also brings the emergency SOS and a medical ID. This is actually a safety feature built into the iPhone, which you can use to power down your iPhone. Nothing wrong is going to happen to it, but there's actually a proper way to go about shutting down your iPhone. Let me show you how to do that. Now, there's actually two methods. One is software related. If we go to settings, general scroll all the way down there it is shut down you can press that button but that's not very convenient you have to go all the way into settings to do that and that is a proper way to shut down your iphone with the power down menu now ever since apple moved the side button from being called the power button now it's the side button if you press it you go and invoke siri by accident most users still don't know that you can actually press volume up, down, and then the side button. And that would actually bring up the actual power down menu on your iPhone, just like that. So again, volume up, down, and then hold the side button. And this would actually bring the proper way to shut down your iPhone with the slide to power off. Next, I want to talk about the battery on iPhone. Now, it is common, it is a habit that if we see our iPhones drop to 5%, 3%, the first thing we want to do is go over to a power source and plug it in. And obviously, that is the common thing to do so it doesn't drain the battery completely and you can still use your iPhone. However, it is recommended that at least once a month, you let your iPhone drain completely. So if your iPhone's battery is at two, 3%, just use it until it shuts down on you. It is common, it is okay for your iPhone to drain its battery completely at least once a month. Actually, it is recommended for your iPhone's battery to be drained completely at least once a month. That way your iPhone can do cycle counts properly and also drain the battery entirely and then refill completely. So it leverages out the cycle counts as well when you go to charge your device. But not only that, it also improves the longevity and health of your battery, believe it or not. So don't always plug in your iPhone if it's at one, 2%, just let it drain. Use it until it powers down and then recharge it. It's always a good habit to do that at least once a month. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is apps running in the background in the app switcher. Now, this is more of a common mistake. Uh, most users open an app and then they go into the app switcher, quit it from the app switcher and then go back to the home screen. They believe that if they quit the application from the app switcher, they're actually improving the performance of the iPhone and you're actually doing the entire opposite. So for example, here's Safari running on this iPhone. You see that when I launched Safari, it didn't really load. It just went straight to the application. The website is loaded, ready to go. But if I go into the app switcher and close it out and then go back into Safari, you'll see for a split second that the application will actually load the website. You see that? That's actually taking up more resources if you're not connected to Wi-Fi, it's taking up more data, and it's actually draining your battery quicker. If I close the app, launch it back, it resumes exactly where it left off. iOS is designed to have these apps frozen in the background, keyword frozen in the background, which actually take up less battery and performance from your iPhone than if you were to just quit it and then go back into the application. This is going to resume the entire app again, and therefore, you're actually losing on performance slash battery, and I just leave them open in the background. I know most users, it is a habit to just open an app, go into the app switcher, quit it, and then continue and resume what you were doing. Try not to do that. Now, another very popular question that I get is how do I clean those fingerprints from the display of my iPhone? How do I clean my iPhone's camera lens, the actual frame, and the display? And honestly, the best thing to do is to find a clean microfiber towel with nothing on it and just wipe them away. The iPhone has an oleophobic coating on the display that if you actually use household cleaning products like glass cleaners, this would actually damage and potentially remove that coating from the display. And then if you think you have smudges on your display now, if you remove that coating, you won't barely be able to see your screen with the smudges. So believe it or not, there's an oleophobic coating on the display of iPhone that prevents from a ton of fingerprints 
to be on the display. And yes, fingerprints still show up on the display, but if you use the household cleaning products for glass cleaning, you're actually going to remove that coating and you're not gonna like the results. Your iPhone's display will smudge to the point where it's almost unusable. So it is recommended to simply use a dry towel, microfiber clean dry towel to clean the display the camera, and the entire frame of the iPhone. Nothing more. Now you can use a slight spray of water on the towel to damp it slightly if you want, but other than that, you don't necessarily need anything to clean your iPhone. And last but not least, one of the things that I highly recommend you never do on your iPhone is play games on your iPhone and plug it into a power source. This is a major no, no, this is going to be constantly putting stress on the battery of your iPhone. As you play, the CPU intensifies, the battery is being used at its maximum, and if you're plugged into a power source, this can create a lot of heat on your iPhone and stress, which therefore can actually make your battery's health die a lot quicker than it was supposed to. So never, never play games while charging your iPhone at the same time. It is never recommended to do that, so just keep that one in mind. This one's very, very important if you wanna save that battery health of your iPhone for a long term. So there you guys have it. This is some few tips and recommendations, of things that you could still be doing wrong, and these were also questions that you guys continue to ask. If you have any more questions, you can leave those in the comments down below. Maybe I'll have an episode two to answer those questions for you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.